Hi everyone, this is an exercise for chapter 7. We're going to be covering variance analysis and the standard cost income statement. In our example, this is our information. Uh, our company is Joyco and Joyco manufactures plastic figurines of pop culture figures. The company has just received its actual figures for the month of November 20XX. The company's manager has tasked you with computing the company's respective variances for direct materials, direct labor, and manufacturing overhead that includes both variable and fixed. Then we need to record the journal entries for production during the month using the standard costing system. After our variances are found and the entries are recorded, this manager would like us to prepare a standard cost income statement for him so he can assess how accurate the company is at budgeting. We're going to need this information on the side, which is all of our standards. So for Joyco, Joyco the standard amount of direct materials used per figurine is a half pound of plastic. The plastic costs four dollars per pound that's what they're budgeting for for labor they're budgeting it's going to take about 0.2 labor hours to make each figurine and each laborer is going to make 16 dollars per hour they believe that they're going to have to allocate variable overhead at a rate of five dollars per hour and they believe they're going to have to allocate fixed overhead at a rate of ten dollars per hour the actual information that's going to be needed for this is how many units they made well they actually made three thousand figurines and they used 1,600 pounds of plastic. The actual price of material was $4.10 per pound, and the actual direct labor costs in total were $9,400 for the 620 labor hours our employees actually worked. The actual labor price per hour, therefore, is $15.50. The actual variable overhead costs were $2,950. We budgeted fixed overhead costs were $6,200, but we actually only spent $6,100 for fixed overhead costs. We budgeted to have sales revenue of fifty-five dollars but our actual sales revenue for these figurines was only $53,000, and our actual non-manufacturing costs were $14,780. Last line is going to be necessary for all of our overhead variances, and is that jo Joyco allocates overhead using a simple costing system with direct labor hours as its cost driver and that they paid all of their actual overhead expenses in cash. That's a lot of background information. Let's parse our way through it. First thing we need to do is figure out what our direct materials variances are. And we're going to figure this out by filling in this table that I have on the side. For our actual costs, they're found by taking the actual input quantity and multiplying it by the actual price. So the actual input quantity times the actual price is the 1,600 pounds of material, it's the actual quantity, times our actual price per pound, which is $4.10, means we spent $6,560 obtaining plastic to make these figurines. In the middle we have what I call the no-name column and in the no-name column it is our actual input quantity times our budgeted price. So our actual quantity was the 1,600 pounds of plastic but we can see from our standards that we budgeted that plastic was going to cost $4 a pound. So given the actual amount of figurines that we made, if we actually paid our budgeted price of $4 we would have only spent $6,400. And then the last column that we have is our flex budget column. And it is found by taking the budgeted input quantity adjusted to actual and multiplying it by budgeted price. What does that mean? Well, what happens is you take the budgeted input quantity we budgeted to have a half pound of plastic of direct materials for each figurine that we made. We multiply that by the actual amount of units of output that we made, the actual number of figurines, which is 3,000. So that's going to give us, in this case, 1,500. We should have used 1,500 pounds of plastic given our actual production. And if we multiply that by the budgeted price, which is $4 per pound, we come up with 6,000. So our flex budget says we should have spent $6,000 on figurines accorded to our standard costs for the actual amount of units that we made. And now to find our price variance and our efficiency variance, well, it's just the differences between the columns. So our price variance is $160 and it is unfavorable. Why is it unfavorable? Because the actual cost we had of $6,560 is $160 more than the amount we came up with in our no-name column. For our efficiency variance, 
it's 400 unfavorable again because our no name column is 400 dollars more than our flex budget said it should have been so read this from right to left and if the number's higher it's unfavorable because they're all costs finally our flex budget variance is just the difference between the actual costs and the flex budget our flex budget says we should have spent six thousand dollars to on materials to make these figurines we actually spent six thousand five hundred sixty so that's a $560 difference and it's unfavorable because, unfavorable because we spent more than we should have according to our flex budget. For labor, we can figure out our variances using the same exact steps. Actual costs or our actual input quantity, it's time for labor, times actual price. Well, our actual quantity of this particular component, labor, was 620 labor hours and our actual price was $15.50 per hour. So we spent $9,610 in labor costs producing these figurines. In our center column, we take our actual input quantity and multiply it by our budgeted price. We had 620 labor hours. We budgeted to pay $16 per hour in our standards up on the top, which means we should have spent $9,920 given this actual input quantity. And finally, for our flex budget, we take our budgeted input quantity, adjusted actual, multiply it by budgeted price. So we made 3,000 units and we budgeted. We set a standard that each unit, each figurine, should take 0.2 hours to make. And if we multiply that by our budgeted price of $16 per hour, we should have spent $9,600 in labor costs to make these figurines. Fill, find the differences between the columns for our variances. We have a $310 price variance and that's favorable. Our no name column says that given our you know level of production, the amount of hours that we had, times our budgeted price, we should have spent $9,920 in labor costs. We actually only spent $9,610, that is a $310 difference, and it is lower, so it is favorable. For efficiency, our flex budget says that we should have spent $9,600. Uh, the no-name column says that it's $9,920. That difference is $320, and since the no-name column is higher, it is unfavorable trying to wrap your head around what that means think about it this way efficiency variance is time in this case because it's labor cost how much time did it take us to make this well our actual time was 620 hours but if you can see from the beginning of our computation for the flex budget if we spent 0.2 hours making each unit and we made 3,000 units well if you multiply that out that's 600 so it's inefficient because it took us an extra 20 hours to make these figurines than it should have according to our budget so we have an unfavorable efficiency variance and again flex budget variance is just the difference between flex budget amount and actual amount and that is ten dollars that's some solid budgeting right there but it is still unfavorable because it's more for variable overhead variances we're going to start with our actual cost and this is given in the information is $2,950 for actual VOH costs. In our no-name column, we take the actual input quantity and we multiply it by budgeted price. And a reminder, direct labor hours is Joyco's cost driver. So the actual quantity is going to be of the driver. So our actual amount of hours that we had was 620. We budgeted to have an allocation rate of $5 per hour, which means 3,100 is what we should come up with. And then flex budget, we take the budgeted input quantity adjusted to actual, multiply it by budgeted price. We made 3,000 units. We expected each unit was gonna take 0.2 hours. And if we multiply that by our budgeted price of $5, we come up with 3,000. So for our spending variance and our efficiency variance, we get $150 favorable spending variance because our actual costs are lower than the no-name column. Efficiency variance is $100 unfavorable because we spent $100 more because it took more hours to make these figurines and in total we have a $50 favorable flex budget variance. For fixed overhead, the actual costs are given. So our actual cost for fixed overhead was $6,100. That center column also given that is our budgeted fixed overhead cost so 6200 goes in our no name column 
And then for flex budget, same thing that we've been doing before. We take the actual amount of production that we had times the standard quantity of our cost driver per unit, we need 3,000 units times 0.2 labor hours, and we multiply that by our budgeted allocation rate, which you can see in our standards on the top is $10 per hour. It comes out to be 6,000. Spending variance, therefore, is $100 favorable. We spent $100 less on fixed overhead than we had budgeted for. Our production volume variance is $200 unfavorable. And the reason this happened is because we spent more of our driver making this and our driver is labor hours it took us more labor hours to make it since it took us more labor hours our production volume variance has to be higher because the number of units that went through was more or at least the time to make these units was more than we expected and our flex budget variance is a hundred dollars unfavorable so with that we're ready to record our journal entries let's start with direct materials purchases so for the direct materials purchase entry, this is the month of November, so we'll make it on November 30th. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to debit direct materials inventory to put inventory on our books. However, when we put that inventory in the books, we're not going to put it on for our actual cost. We're going to put it on for that known number in the middle, which is 6400 but we spent $6,560, right? What are we gonna have for our second line in here? Well, that's the price variance. So we're going to debit direct materials price variance. And in journal entries, all of these price variances are what they call transitional accounts or temporary accounts. Uh, so they don't have account types. If a variance is unfavorable, it gets debited. If a variance is favorable, it gets credited. In this case, our price variance from our information tells us that it was $160 unfavorable. So we're going to debit it for 160 bucks. And then lastly, we still got to pay for this material that we purchased and we can't, you know, pay 6,000 from our flex budget or 6,400 from our no name column and say, well, hey, that's what we budgeted for. We got to pay the actual amount we spent and the actual cost was 6,560. We purchased direct materials. So as it stands right now, we are going to have this variance in here. Don't worry, it's going to work itself out later. Just follow along with me for right now. Next thing we need is our journal entry for direct material requisitions, putting materials into use in production. So on November 30th, the first thing we're gonna do for this entry is we're going to put it into WIP because it's going into production. The amount that we're going to put into WIP is 6,000 and you're gonna see a trend right here. Every time you have a debit to WIP inventory, it's always gonna be for the flex budget amount. Um, we're standard costing here, so we only put the amount into the account according to what our standards say it should have. That's going to allow us to use all of these transitional accounts, like, for example, direct materials efficiency variance, to figure out how bad we missed our budget. So what is our efficiency variance? Well, it's $400, and it's unfavorable. And our direct materials inventory is going to get credited here for 6400 So in the last one, we debited it for 6400 Now we're going to credit it for 6400 moving those materials out of direct materials. And into WIP, we recorded all of our direct mat requisitions during the period. Now we have the journal entry for direct labor costs. We had to split direct materials into two. We can do all of our direct labor variances in one entry. And we're going to do it like so. On November 30th, we're going to start with WIP inventory. One more time, the number that goes into WIP inventory always comes from the flex budget. So we're going to debit WIP inventory for 9600 Now we have to handle our variances. Unfavorable variances always get debited. So direct labor efficiency variance is going to be debited for the amount of that variance, which is 320 Favorable variances always get credited. So direct labor price variance was favorable. We credit it for the $310 variance. And then lastly, this is direct labor costs. We have to pay our employees. Could be cash. We're going to put it in salaries and wages payable just to make it easy. And that is for our actual amount because that's what we actually owe them. That's what we're going to have to pay them. So we have to put the actual amount into our payables, 9610 We recorded our direct labor costs. For the journal entry for variable overhead expenditures, this is our actual expenditures that we had. And as a reminder from our information, they paid for all of their overhead expenditures in cash. Well, this is an easy entry. All we have to do is go on our information and figure out what our actual variable overhead expenditures were. And when we do, 
we're going to debit manufacturing overhead to record that actual and it's going to be for 2950 bucks because that was our actual VOH costs. Credit here is cash because all expenditures were paid in cash, 2950 uh, It's kind of uncommon that all of your overhead costs would come from cash. You would usually have things in there like accumulated depreciation, the expiration of prepaid assets. Maybe you got some payables that went in there, uh, but for the sake of ease, we're just going to have them pay it all in cash in this example. So. That is our journal entry to record our actual VOH expenditures. Well, we had VOH variances, so here we're going to have to go through and we're going to have to record our VOH variances. Here's our information from variable overhead. To record this entry, we're going to start by filling the date on November 30th, and our first debit is to WIP, and I'm sure you've caught on by now, WIP always comes from the flex budget. So we're going to debit WIP inventory for the $3,000 that we had from our flex budget for our variable overhead costs. We have an unfavorable variance, it's our VOH efficiency variance. Unfavorable variances get debited, so we're going to debit that for 100. We have a favorable variance, and that is our VOH spending variance. So we're going to credit that for 150. And then lastly, we're going to credit manufacturing overhead. And that is for 2950 which was the actual amount that we had. And quick reminder, in case you've forgotten, for manufacturing overhead, it's a temporary account as well. Uh, what determines a debit and a credit is the debit side is your actual overhead cost. And anytime you have an allocation, it's gonna end up getting credited. Since we're allocating overhead to the figurines that we made in this entry, that's why we're crediting manufacturing overhead. And we allocated our VOH. So variable overhead down, now on to fixed overhead. And just like our variable overhead actual entry, we're gonna record our actual fixed overhead expenditures by finding that number in the information. On November 30th, we're going to record the actual expenses of manufacturing overhead by debiting it for 6,100, which was our actual FOH costs. And again, we're assuming that all overhead expenditures are paid in cash, so let's credit cash for 6,100. We recorded our actual FOH expenditures. Now for the allocation of fixed overhead, given all of our standards and that fun stuff, uh, we need to record it given the information that we had on November 30th. We're going to start by debiting WIP inventory for the amount that we had in flex budget. Our flex budget says we should have assigned $6,000 in fixed overhead costs to our units produced given all of our budgeted amounts and our actual level of production. So that's what we're going to put into WIP. We'll record our variances. Unfavorable variances get debited. So we have our FOH production volume variance. I know the names are kind of changing. I have no clue why they don't call all of them price and efficiency variance. They, they change on things. It's just you memorize them and you'll be good to go. So. It's a $200 unfavorable variance. We're going to debit it for $200. Lastly, we have our FOH spending variance, and that was favorable, so it's going to get credited for $100. And manufacturing overhead is going to get credited for the actual amount of fixed overhead costs we had, which was $6,100. We allocated our fixed overhead. The whole purpose of what we've been doing is to go through and figure out what our variances were so that we can have information for management for whoever's controlling the costs of our place that allows them to make decisions about how they want to prepare the budget in the future how we're doing on minimizing all of our costs for our inputs all our materials labor and overhead costs um, and also how efficient our workers are being are, are they taking the proper amount of time to finish this job are they using materials wisely and not wasting them? So all of this information helps them and we're gonna put it all in one place in a thing called the standard cost income statement. So anybody who is running production or who is involved in running production has one document they can go and look at and see, okay, this is where all our variances were, this is what I can probably fix. We're going to need two things to do this. We're gonna need our actual information uh, for the numbers we have to report on here. And we're going to need all of the variances that we just found. That's the reason we did all those calculations, which I've compiled into this table. We're going to start, start with our sales revenue at standard. So that is what we budgeted we were going to have for sales revenue in our master budget at the beginning of the period. Let's budget to have 
$55,000 in sales revenue. I'm taking this from the actual information, the third line from the bottom of that chart. But that wasn't what we actually had. We actually only had $53,000 of sales revenue. So our actual revenue was $2,000 less than our budgeted revenue. And that is our sales revenue variance, the $2,000 difference, bringing us to our actual revenue of $53,000. Next up, we have to report what our cost of goods sold at standard cost was. And to figure out what your cost of goods sold at standard cost was, the best way to go about it is to look through your journal entries. And in our journal entries, we had four debits to whip. When we recorded the requisition of direct materials, we debited whip for 6,000. When we recorded our direct labor costs, we debited whip for 9,600. When we recorded our allocation of variable overhead, we, debited, we debited whip for 3,000. And when we recorded the allocation of fixed overhead, we debited whip for 6,000. Well, if you add those four numbers together, we're going to come up with $24,600. So to find that number, go through your entries and sum up the four debits that you had to whip during the process. That gives you your cost of goods sold at standard, what they should have been given your actual amount of production at your budgeted or standard uh, quantities and price. Now we can fill in all the variances and that information has been compiled on the side. Our direct materials price variance was unfavorable. Here we're going to report it as a positive. Why? Because this is a, a cost. This is, this is our COGS that we're figuring out. So if something's unfavorable, it's going to increase our cost of goods sold. So we're going to report it as positive, 160 bucks. Our direct materials efficiency variance was also unfavorable so we're going to report that as 400 uh, and then for direct labor price we have a favorable variance which should lower our costs so when we put this on our standard cost income statement we're going to put it as a negative because since it was favorable it's lowering our cost of production so on here the rule of thumb is unfavorable variances list them as positive because they're going to increase your cost of goods sold favorable variances put them in brackets because they're going to decrease your cost of goods sold and with that we can just fill in the rest of our information for our eight variances and when we're done filling in those numbers we add up all of our variances to find our total manufacturing cost variances and when we do we're going to get 620 and what that means is we spent 620 dollars more to produce these units than we thought we were going to at the beginning of the period when we budgeted. So while our COGS is standard, uh, our cost of goods sold given our volume of production, the 3,000 units we made, should have been 24,600. It was actually 25,220, just taking your cost of goods sold at standard and adding to it your total manufacturing cost variance. So now that we have our sale, actual sales revenue and our actual COGS, we can figure out our gross profit, 53,000 minus 25,220 gives us gross profit of 27,780. And from that, we get to subtract our non-manufacturing costs, which are all, all our SG&A expenses, our selling general and administrative expenses, given in the information as 14,780, which means that our operating income is gonna end up being $13,000. Lastly, all of those variances account, variance accounts that we used, they're temporary accounts. And all temporary accounts need to be closed at the end of every period. The whole reason that we're using these is for information. But we don't want them hanging on our books because if we just let the balances sit there, well, it's not going to help management make decisions in the future. If you have a direct labor price variance balance on your books of a million dollars because it's been sitting there for 25 years, how does that help management look at that number and say, okay, this is, this is what's wrong right now. So at the end of every period, we have to reduce the balance of all these variance accounts to zero because they're temporary. All our favorable variances, they get credited in the journal entries, which means every one of those accounts is going to have a credit balance. Well, to reduce it to zero, we're going to debit it for the same amount. All of our unfavorable variances, they got debited in the journal entries. Uh, so to reduce them to zero, we need to credit them for the same amount. So in the closing entry, do the opposite. In this case, favorable variances get debited. Unfavorable variances get credited because we're reducing all those accounts to zero. 
And then lastly, the debit or credit to COGS is always equal to the total manufacturing cost variances that you have on your standard income statement. So if I back up to that real fast, our total manufacturing cost variance was 620. And since it increased our cost of goods sold, it needs to increase our cost of goods sold in our closing entry. And cost of goods sold is an expense, and expenses go up with a debit. So we know we need a debit cost of goods sold for that amount. So the closing entry to close all these variances to cost of goods sold is as such listed here. And as you can see, it is huge and massive. I apologize, that's just the way that it works.